are you seeing astrology videos almost every day you are reading articles you are analyzing charts you are making your best you are trying your ultimate best you know you are going to a mentor you have joined some course you are doing everything that it takes to learn astrology and you are learning okay but when you are making predictions they are not working as it happened to you sometimes it has happened with me and so many other astrologers and so many students of astrology i don't know about you <laughs> but if it is happening then there are a thousand reasons why that's happening but here are top 10 reasons because of which your predictions are not coming true why or forget about predictions you are not even uh, getting to know what you should say okay so if that is your situation or suppose you know you are able to say something that you know this will happen that will happen but you but that's not turning out correct so then you might be doing one of these 10 blunders okay and this would these blunders will uh, knowing these blunders will help you if you are an astrologer or you are a student of astrology or you are somewhere in between okay and at the end of course everybody is a student of astrology always right so therefore even if you are an astrologer and you are perfect or near perfect you can still avoid these mistakes okay now number 1 you are not using numerology you are only using astrology now numerology is the science of the date of birth so in numerology we have the numbers and we have the basic and the destiny number so the basic number is the sum of the day so if you are born like on uh, 14th then your basic number is 5 okay so if you are born on like uh, 17th september 1950 then your destiny number which is the sum of the entire date of birth is 5 so therefore please check these two planets your basic number the planet so you know one represents the sun two is the moon three is jupiter four is rahu five is mercury six is venus seven is ketu then eight is saturn and nine is mars so whatever your basic and destiny number is that you should check in the horoscope these two planets are very 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 important and these two planets will kind of decide what you do in your professional life okay so very 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 important number 2 when you go to astrology you do not look at the overall chart this is the most classic of all blunders which everybody does oh venus is in 6th there will be no marriage oh seventh lord in 6th no marriage sixth lord in 7th no marriage oh my dear sir my dear madam what about the second lord what about the uh, seventh lord what about the seventh house what about the 11th house what about the trines what about the ascendant what about your lagna planets in the ascendant ascendant lord nakshatra of the ascendant lord uh what about the moon nakshatra you don't see all this you do not see the potential of a person using the overall chart for for a particular area of life so for example if you are seeing marriage just don't see venus just don't see seventh house just don't see seventh lord you have to see all these planets you have to see uh, the divisional charts you have to see everything okay and you have to check dasha so these are things which we will discuss because if you don't see them and you just you know uh, make some uh, random predictions okay your seventh lord is in six better you don't marry you know something uh, you you say something as stupid as like that then uh, <laughs> what if the person second and 11 they are supporting marriage very much and the sixth lord or seventh lord's dasha ma dasha is not coming in their life so then what will happen this person will get married and imagine what he or she will tell about astrologers right so therefore see the potential see the lagna 5th 9th the houses for marriage for career second 6th 10th 11th so you have to know which house represents what and then you will know how everything is falling in place the flow of the chart okay number 3 not looking at nakshatra lords this is this is criminal if you don't look at this so let me give you an example like yesterday you might have seen i uploaded the video on eighth house so in that what did i say if the nakshatra so suppose your eighth lord is somewhere okay doesn't matter where he is but suppose i give the example if eighth lord is in pushya pushya nakshatra it is in cancer ruled by shani maharaj so suppose pushya nakshatra which is lorded by saturn the lord of pushya is in the 10th or 11th then this placement is fantastic then in the dasha of the eighth lord you will get lot of wealth but 
Suppose this same Saturn is in the 6th, 8th or 12th, then this is a very difficult placement. Why? Because then at the Nakshatra level, you will suffer very much. Okay, so then this is a very difficult place. And But what you do? Oh yeah, 8th Lord is in the 10th. You know, you will have great wealth, massive wealth. You will have maybe, but provided Saturn, who is the Nakshatra Lord of the 8th Lord, is also well placed. It should either best is the 11th or 10th or 5th or 9th. For marriage, but this will not be applicable for uh, so sorry for career. So this is not applicable for marriage. You know, for marriage, uh, it it should be linked with the second, seventh, or eleventh. Okay, not the eighth lord. Any planet, any planet, if via nakshatra indicates the second, seventh, or eleventh, is reasonably good for marriage. Okay, but again, the same rule applies. You have to see uh, the overall chart again. Okay, so don't just blindly go. Don't just blindly say. Oh, seventh lord is sitting in the uh, the nakshatra lord of the seventh lord is uh, in the eleventh house. So fantastic, right? Well, yes, it could be, but not necessarily. What if the other planets are not agreeing? Okay, so and the same principle applies. Look at the overall chart, okay, and don't ignore nakshatra lords. Then number four, and before we go to four, uh, please don't subscribe to uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and don't forget to hit. The thumbs up. We'll discuss about the thumb also. <laughs> At the end. Okay. Uh, so, and yes, for personalized consultations, you will find my website down in the description section. Now, number four. This is maybe uh, after number two. This is like gold. Okay. You you ignore the Bhava Chalit chart. So, I have a video on the Bhava Chalit chart. BCC. If you have not seen it, please see it. The position of planets, the house positions of planets must be taken only from the BCC and not from the Lagda chart. I will not speak much about it here because it does not make sense because there's already a video. So please go to Exotic Astrology Bhava Chalit chart, B-H-A-V-A, C-H-A-L-I-T, C-H-A-R-T. Okay. So if you don't know what is Bhava Chalit chart and if you think, oh, your Lagna chart, you know, Jupiter is in seven, there will be marriage. What if in the... What what if actually you come to know when you see the Bhavachandi chart, it is not in the 7th, it is actually in the 6th house, okay? Because suppose you are a Cancer Lagna and your Jupiter is in Capricorn. So what he will say, oh yeah, yeah I know Jupiter is debilitated in my 7th house. You know, I know, you know, you know, you know, but what you don't know <laughs> is that it is in Capricorn, but maybe it is in the 6th house, okay? So it may not give you marriage, it may give you a job, okay? For example, okay, so... If you are using the Lagna chart only for predictions and you don't use the Bhava chart, you are, your the, the step 0 0.001 itself is wrong and nothing else will matter, okay? Number five, you do not use divisional charts. Oh, Shani is exalted here in my Lagna chart, you know. So see, Shani stays exalted for how many? Two and a half, three years, right? <laughs> so, and suppose your Shani is in Kendra. Then you are having Shash Mahapurushok. So do you think, uh, I mean, just try to think in two, three years, how many people will have Shash Mahapurushok? I mean, millions of people, right? So do you think that that yoga will be beneficial to everybody? I mean, it will be to some extent, but do you think everybody will become like, you know, millionaires just because they have this yoga? No. You have to see the overall chart. You have to see the Nakshatra Lord. You have to see... Now, the divisional charts, what is going on in the D9, in the D10, in the D7, you know, D60. So, those particular divisional charts will highlight specific areas, okay? And they will tell you how uh, you should see the placement of that same Saturn for every area of life. Like, you know, the Navamsha for your spirituality, your inner well-being and your marriage. And then Dashamsha is for your profession, D60 for your soul, no, um, then we have the D7, which is for, you know, children. So these are things which you should see and that will actually help you to get a narrowed down vision. Otherwise, what is happening is nowadays astrologers, they will say, oh, Aries, uh, Mars is in Aries, you know, it's in Moon or Sun is in Aries, you know, we give this gemstone, that gemstone. What if that planet is not good for your marriage? Maybe it's only good for your career because the Navamsha is indicating so. So therefore, Better you not, uh, you don't take the gemstone, otherwise you may get divorced, okay? So, therefore, be very careful when you wear gemstones because many astrologers or not all, but 
most of them, 80-90% of them don't use divisional charts and uh, they they may make blunders or even they don't but uh, you you will be misled okay so be very careful always uh, always go to an astrologer if if and only the astrologer is using the bhavchali chart looking at the overall chart using nakshatra lords and also uh, using divisional charts okay now number 6 this is gold this is gold 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 you do not use dashas so for example your uh, suppose there is a planet in your sixth house, like Venus. Let's say, let's say you. Okay, now Venus is in sixth. So what you will say? Oh, married life is gone. It's finished, destroyed. But what if Venus Mahadasha does not come? Then that means the problem in married life will come during Venus Dasha, but only during Antar Dashas. What if Venus Dasha came when the person was a child? What if the person was born in Venus Dasha? Okay. So then later Sun, Moon, Mars, Rahu. The Jupiter, Saturn, all this will come and then what happens? The person will not have any problems in marriage provided these other planets are reasonably well placed. Provided. Disclaimer all, or always. Okay. Now, otherwise, if these planets are also badly placed, then you have problems in marriage. But now what happens? This person is 25 and looking for uh, somebody to get married and this person goes to an astrologer. Suppose this person is a man and the astrologer tells him, oh, you will never find a girl, you know, because you have a planet in sixth and, you know, it is also Karaka for marriage, blah, blah, blah. You will say all this. So that, per and suppose uh, in six months, the person gets married to a good girl. And then what will happen? This person, will he say nice things about astrology and about astrologers? Certainly not, right? Number seven, over emphasis on transits. It's like... Uh, what is, what is that uh, thing which they say in Hindi cinemas and series? Janna Pachan Main Tera Mehman, something like that. <laughs> so, for example, uh, let's take uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's chart. So, suppose Jupiter transits 7th house in his Kudli, or you can take Rahul Gandhiji's chart also. You know? So, these people are not married, both of them. No, of course, Modiji was or whatever. I mean, as of now, he's not having uh, his wife with him anymore. Uh, physically, <laughs> mentally also maybe. So now, if any planet transits their seven, do you think they will get married? I mean, whatever. Why? Why will they not get married? Because their chart may be showing separation in general. Okay. And also in their dasha. So no matter which planet transits their 2nd, 7th or 11th, there will be no marriage. Okay, so therefore, uh, you need to understand that the dashas, the transits cannot override dashas and dashas cannot override the overall chart. So overall chart, dashas and transits. Always follow this golden principle. Don't go the other way around. Oh, Venus is transiting my 5th. You know, I will meet the love of my life. No, you will not. You will, but <laughs> provided... The chart and the dashas are agreeing, otherwise not, okay? Number eight, not looking at other parallel houses for a particular event. This is very important. Most of you will miss this. Okay, now what is this? What are parallel houses? So, for career, the 10th house is important. But you also have the 2nd, 6th and 11th. But what you do, you just see the 10th house or you just see the 6th or you just see the 11th and you ignore everything else. Okay, nothing else matters because we know what's going to happen, right? So, therefore, uh, for similarly for marriage, 2nd, 7th, uh, 11th, you know, 5th, 9th, all these 5 houses have to be seen. But you just see one house, you know, 7th house, bad, gone, gone, marriage is gone. You don't see dashas, you don't see nakshatra lords, you don't see anything else. You, you are just blindly... Uh, seeing uh, saying things by seeing one thing, then that will that will invite disaster into your life as an astrologer. Number nine, you look at everything, but you don't look at karakas. <laughs> so every event, every event, every thing in your life is signified by a karaka. There is nothing in this life that you will see or you will do which will not uh, be represented by some planet in astrology. Okay. So, for example, if you fall sick, that is represented by Saturn because Saturn is sickness, disease, old age and all this. If there are surgery, then uh, these surgeries can be represented by Mars or Ketu. Okay. If there are accidents, they can be Rahu Ketu. So, therefore, you need to understand that if a person, suppose a person 
has a difficult marriage as per the 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th and 11th. And along with that, the Karaka for marriage, Venus is also very badly placed. Then this is a very bad situation. Okay. But uh, anyways, you have to understand every planet is important and every house is important. But the Karaka is also equally important. Okay. So whenever you are talking of profession, just don't see 2nd, 6th, 10th, 11th, just don't see them. You should also see Sun, Mars, uh, you should see, sorry, Sun, Mercury and Saturn. Okay, these three planets primarily. And if you take Jupiter as also one of the Karakas for the 10th, then you need to check Jupiter also. Okay, so these four planets cannot be missed when it comes to career. Okay, so therefore you need to understand that the Karakas will give you very important clues and ignoring or rejecting them will not do any good to you. Last but not the least, <laughs> you don't see palmistry. Okay, palmistry is also very important because your uh, numerology will tell you how many uh, people were born in a particular day. They will have the same numerology. Then astrology, for two hours, you know, the D1 is same. Then for some minutes, D9 is same. D10, you know, D60 again, you know. Uh, for two minutes, you know, around it can change, okay, or even for less than that. But, and what if, you know, twins are born, okay, so then uh, you you may not, you may or may not be able to use the D60 if they are born very close. They, they might, you know, they may have the same D60, you never know, okay. Now, in generally, they don't, but this is an argument given by people, so you have to know how to counter it, you know, you cannot say, oh, yeah, you know, uh, everybody has a different free will, they will use it differently, you know, but then what's the use of astrology if you cannot find it, right? So, the answer is, uh, you need to uh, look at their palms and, you know, palmistry as a science also, that is also very important. The fingers, the mounds, the lines, uh, the symbols and the dents, and the length, uh, breadth, of the hand, you know, the palm, front, back, everything is very important because you might have the same D1, you might have the same D9, you might have the same numerology, but you will never have the same, you know, fingerprint, never the same palm and no two human beings will ever have it, okay? So, therefore, please learn palmistry if you are not aware and please try to use it to make predictions. So, Use astrology, you use, uh, so when I say astrology, I mean the horoscope, then you use numerology, then you use palmistry, then you uh, use prasna also. Prasna is also a part of astrology, of course, and use omens, okay, uh, which are like nimitta. So if you use these five and you try to make a prediction, then also it might fail, but your probability of failure will be very, very less, okay. And of course, if you are not sure of the birth time of some person, also do birth time rectification because if that is not correct, if the birth time is wrong, nothing else matters, okay? Alright, thank you so much for personalized consultations. My website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And yes, don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And please write down below what are some of the reasons that you think why astrology predictions fail, okay? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Please take care. Jai Siaram. Don't forget to subscribe.